living the authentic Christian life brings suffering and oppression. Paul told Timothy, In fact, all who want to live religiously in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Was that intended for encouragement or discouragement? Certainly the former. An authentic Christian knows what Jesus went through to win for us our salvation. And we are called to follow in his footsteps. So inevitably, the path of Christ leads us to the cross of Christ. Jesus himself spoke of the Beatitudes. He said, Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How can persecution be a blessing? Well, if suffered due to righteousness, it helps us to be better Christians, following the way of Jesus and leading all the way to heaven. Jesus says further, Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Who wants to be insulted? Who wants to be maligned? We do not. But there is blessing there, if thrown our way because of Jesus. There is blessing there, if we experience what Jesus experienced. Jesus says in John 15 verse 18, If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. We follow in Jesus' footsteps, and this brings us to the same cross, persecuted by the same worldly forces. This actually sets us apart and identifies us as followers of Jesus. Thus Jesus says further, If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. So persecution by the world is actually a sign of being an authentic disciple of Jesus. Jesus says, no slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Such persecution is a manifestation of being a Christian. Jesus says further, And they will do all these things to you on account of my name. So when these things happen, painful as they are, what is our right posture? Jesus says it himself. In Matthew 5, verse 12, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Now we not only rejoice in suffering, but we boast of it. It is a badge of honor, identifying us as authentic disciples of Jesus. Further, it works out great virtues in us, helping us to attain to our eternal goal. There is no other better path to holiness than suffering. Thus, Paul could say in Romans 5, verses 3 to 5, We even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope, and hope does not disappoint. Have you ever seen athletes in serious training or elite soldiers being formed? They push themselves to the limit or even beyond the limit. They drive themselves to exhaustion. In like manner, Paul says, I drive my body and train it for fear that, after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Endurance is the key. There can be very many things in life that can discourage us or bring us down especially as we encounter problems and trials. So we plod on, mindful of how Jesus carried his cross to Calvary, one painful step at a time. As we read in Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 2, we persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Jesus knew what authentic followers of peace would have to go through. So he already saw how his example could be our encouragement. 
Thus, in the next verse we read, Consider how endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Thus, the lesson for us in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 12, When persecuted, we endure. James tells us that endurance produces proven character, as the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance be perfect, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Affliction, if we persevere through it, brings about holiness. We are best when oppressed. God bless you.